to each other. Amen. I'm going to preach on a subject that is much needed, but sometimes hard. I'm going to preach on the subject of rejoicing. Amen. The Bible, and this word, as we think about the word rejoice, if you found your place, you can stand briefly for the reading of God's word. But uh, the word rejoice, and I'm going to get this in our mind. Just has to do with the idea of being glad. And I know there is there is much that is going on that could sorrow us and in the degree it does. And uh, that's okay. We preached a funeral Monday uh, to that family that his wife was talking about, and I told them there is a time for grief. That's normal, that's human. But I want to say that, that rejoicing is what we need. Amen. Rejoicing is what we need. Uh, the book of Philippians chapter number 4 and verse number 1. You're on, you might want to read like this. Therefore, my beloved brethren, and longed for, my brethren, dearly beloved, and longed for, my joy and crown, so stand fast in the Lord. That is critical. So stand fast in the Lord, my dearly beloved. I beseech Eudas you, you and beseech Syntyche that they be of the same mind in the Lord. And I entreat thee also, true yoke fellow, help those women which labored with me in the gospel. With Clement also. And with other my fellow laborers whose names are in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say rejoice. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this privilege to be here this morning. I stand where I know this that in my flesh all I can do is fail and flounder and fall. God, I need your help and I desire to be a help to your people. I desire to be an encouragement that your will, God, to help us in these days to be resilient. God, not to let the pressures of things going on around us so dampen our spirits and so weaken us that we cannot rejoice. Father, what a, what a world in darkness needs to see is a church in life rejoicing. God, I pray that you'd give us strength and courage and boldness to do that. God, I pray for your unction and your anointing this morning. But knowing this, I cannot, I cannot, I cannot do what is set before me without your help. So God, I trust you to do in me, through me, and for your people what only you can. For it's in Jesus' name that I pray. Amen. Amen. You can be seated. I want to I want to say this morning that really the thought that's on my heart is just the, the thought of the scripture there as we read in verse number four. Where the Bible says, Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. And uh, I don't know you can and as I was saying, I like to read notes. I don't. This book, the Philippians, if you've got a Scofield Bible, will be in your introduction uh, there in, in the front of, of Philippians. But one of the things that he says is this about the second paragraph down at the end of the paragraph. It says, Christian experience. Paul would teach here uh, is, is not something which is going on around the believer. That is, it's not, it's, our Christian experience is not about what goes on around us. It's not about the, the, the hustle and bustle of this life. It's not about the good things or the bad things. But he said this, it's not something which is going on around the believer, but something which is going on within him. In order to be able to rejoice 
in dark and troubled times, it is going to take something more than what's on the outside. We've said, and, and we know this, and we preach this, it's not hard to be a Christian in here on Sunday morning. It's not hard when the air is set right and, 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 and everybody's in fellowship and, and things of that, and everything just in, in a sense seems to be going all right. That is not, that is not what, it, what it is. What Christian experience really is, is this. It is that you have Christ in you, the hope of glory. If you have not Christ in you, the best that you can do in the means of, in the way of rejoicing, that is in being glad, is by looking to and leaning on outside sources and outside things to give you some joy. All the things that I have seen and <coughs> coming in this week and I, I'm not here to, in, in, essence, in essence to preach that uh, all the down message but one of the things that, that we've seen that's been brought in around the mountain our where we live is, is, is alcohol. And uh, we've seen that brought in, beer cans and bottles of liquor and things of that nature. Not a great amount, but somebody in there needed something to lean on. Somebody in there, whoever that may have been, that was brought to, I didn't even want to know, in all honesty, but they had to look somewhere else for some help. Friend, I'm glad that this morning, that it doesn't matter in what's going on now, what's happened in the past in our lives or the storms that are coming. I want to report to you that as a child of God you have something in you. The Bible teaches us this in one place. Greater is he that is within us than he that's in the world. Amen. Friend, I want you to be reassured this morning that as a child of God, there is not, now listen, we have been blessed and we have been helped and, and we've been brought things and, and, and folks have prayed for us and we've prayed for one another and there's been so much that's been done. But at the end of the day, when all of that runs out and all worldly things, if you will, in that sense, have come to an end, there is still a rest that remains. The Bible talks about a rest that remains for the child of God. I laid down in my bed there at night at the house before the wife was coming back and came back in. And I lay there in bed and I didn't ready to go to bed and go to sleep. And I lay there and I just thank God for bringing me through another day and thank Him that through it all, He never left me. And I want you to understand this morning. Hey man, I, I know these try to pop problems that we have in our life that don't have anything to do with what's going on in the devastation around us, but it's devastating to you. I want you to rest assured that you can still rejoice in it all, knowing that at the end of the day, this world is not your home. Yeah. That old song says we're just a passing through. Yeah. My treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue. Hey, church, this morning, I want you to learn through this. I want us to gain something through this. I want us to know that no matter what comes, no matter what happens, hey, we have a Savior in which we can lean for repose, and we can trust him to never fail us, to never falter, to never stumble or fail, and he'll be there to the end. And praise God when the end comes, we'll hear him coming with the sound of the yeah. trumpet, and we'll be yeah. headed home, and that'll be the end of all of our trials and our heartache and trouble. Yeah. Hey, rest in that and rejoice in that this morning. Rejoice in the Lord always. Yeah. And again, I say rejoice. It's not always easy, is it? It's not always easy. But I, one of the first things that I thought about and I think about that Christian experience is not something going on uh, around, uh, around us, but something that goes on inside of us. As, as we begin this chapter, as Paul is writing uh, to a church at, at Colossae or at Philippi, uh, there they, they was something he told them. He said, therefore, my dear, my brethren, Dearly beloved and long for my joy and crown. He said this, so stand fast in the Lord. We have, listen, 
It's not just homes that have been swept away, and it's not just physical, physical life that has been lost. But I'm telling you that there's a lot of folk, amen, who's had their faith shaken, amen, for the simple fact they had never been rooted firmly and grounded properly, amen, in the scripture, never been rooted firmly and grounded properly in the grace that is from above, never found the, the real mercy and hope that God provides, amen. And as he's right here in the church at Philippi, if you study that out, you'll find the church at Philippi was a church. Amen. The Bible, that, that our commentary tells us that there was nothing really to set in order as far as church doctrine was concerned. But the real problem was, amen, when trouble came, and where would you stand when the trouble came? I want to say that Paul said to him here, stand, stand fast in the Lord, my dearly beloved. Uh, let me say this. I want to encourage you. If you've been shaken by what's going on, if you've been troubled and your heart's broken, hey, get, get in a place this morning. We'll have an invitation here in just a little while. Hey, my Lord, if you've been troubled and shaken and who hasn't, hey, but can I tell you, don't let it shake the foundation of your faith, which is the Lord Jesus Christ. Get on your knees and learn to stand fast in the Lord. Amen. The best way you can stand, amen, is on your knees. Amen. I'm telling you, the effectual, firm, and proud, and righteous man availeth mud. Hey, learn how to pray until you pray through. Learn how to stand. Amen. With all the wiles of the devil thrown at you. Learn how to rejoice and shout in the midst of the storm and lift up his holy name. Because through it all, he's going to bring us. And we'll come out better on the other side and we was when we went in. I'm going to tell you this. Folks are going to learn some things through this and look back and see how God's brought them through and their faith will be strengthened. But at the same time, there's probably some folk whose faith is going to be shattered. Hey, don't be one of those. Stand fast in the Lord. Amen. Stand fast in the Lord. And then Paul gives a few things right here that will help us and then remember here that he's writing to a church. He's writing to a church. And here's some thoughts they give him before he told them to rejoice. Look at verse number two. Verse number two. Chapter four, verse number two, he said this. I beseech Judas and beseech Sintite. Or how do you say that? that they be of the same mind in the Lord. Let me say this is what I thought of. As Paul, as Paul was writing to this church, I don't know, there's there's nothing, nothing much said about Judas and Sintite, but one thing we can kind of determine, something had come between. They were not of the same mind. And Paul, before he tells them to rejoice, he's saying this, you're going to have to get your hands together. If we want to rejoice as a body, hey, I, I'll say, we ought to as a church be able to rejoice together. But here's a fact. We can't if we're not of the same mind. The Bible says, let this same mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Now, I know this. I know we have different thoughts about different things. Amen. Not one of us, not any two of us in here this morning will agree on every little thing. I want to be very clear. Where the Bible is clear and where the Bible is plain, there's no variance. Amen? There's no variance. When the Bible speaks, amen, that we speak and we speak, try to speak plain. I, I don't have a high education as far as uh, biblical. I never went to sit there and talk to somebody Okay, I, I've never been to seminar, but I can read. Amen. Amen. And, and I've got a fairly good grasp on the English language because they still taught that when I went to school. Yeah, man. Amen. And I can understand some things. And what I see in this is this, that the Bible is very clear on, on about everything you need to know. The Bible is clear. And where you don't have clarity, keep talking to the author and he'll help you. Amen. Amen. Keep talking to the author and he'll help you. One of the things that will disrupt the, the, the ability of rejoicing is when we get out of we get out of sync with one another. Now, I don't know who might need to hear this either now 
or, or in, maybe it would have helped you in the past or in the future. But let me tell you something. We're going to have struggles with each other from time to time. Amen? And the problem is with you. We're going to have problems from time to time. And one of the worst things that we can possibly do in time, and especially like right now, one of the worst things that we can do is allow those troubles to get in there and mingle with everything else that's going on. And what it does is it, it magnifies the problem that you have already. Yeah. When I can't come to you, Zach, hey man, when there's something between me and you, and we've already got problems going on, we're trying to deal with, and I can't come to you. Him, hey, I'm gonna tell you, it'll ruin every ability to rejoice that you've got. It'll rob you of your joy, it'll rob you of your testimony, it'll rob you of your witness, and the world outside that is looking for help and needing to touch from God, they won't be able to see it in you because you don't have it yourself. I will say, hey, if we have problems arise, get her taken care of. Right. I don't know if everybody knows this this morning. We have a clear man, we have a clear mandate. I'm just gonna say this. If you're not following what the Bible says as far as we call it conflict resolution. Amen. Amen. The original author of conflict resolution was the Savior. Amen. Amen. And, and he told us how to handle things in between us. And as I read there in, in Philippians chapter number four about you Udius and Sintai here, how how do you say that word? Amen. One of the things that I find was they wasn't in agreement. Well, it don't, it don't tell what it was. It don't, it don't elaborate. But one thing it does is tells them they ought to be in one mind together. So I'm going to give you some clear instruction from the Bible. You probably ain't read or ain't heard in a while. I want every Christian in this room, I want every Christian in this room to listen to what I'm about to read to you, and I'm going to be very clear. If you're not following the words of the Savior concerning the Amen. Because listen, your, your sour attitude, your sour uh, uh, way of doing things in, in toward us, hey, listen, it'll cause, there's no problem in the church that, that whether how small it may be, that doesn't affect the whole body. Because right, yeah. the Bible says we're fitly formed and put together. We're a body. I can't do without you. Amen. I need you. We need, you need me. We need each other. And when conflict arises, hey, and it causes a problem, it causes division, our joy is suspended. We don't have it. We can't. I can't sit in church and worship when all I can think about is what Zach said. Right. I'm just using him because he's close right here. <laughs> I'm not really preaching to Zach this morning. <laughs> <laughs> but the Bible says this. These are, these are the words of your Savior. You ain't hearing your saved say amen. Amen. All right. All you ameners, here's what your Savior said. Matthew 18. He said this. Moreover, if thy brother shall trespass against thee. Now what we're get, trying to get at is, is rejoicing. Right? Re rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. So when my brother trespasses against me, I can't. It robs me. So if 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 my uh, example here this morning, Brother Zach, has trespassed against me, here's what my Bible says. Go and tell him his fault between thee and him alone. Hey, if I look up here. <coughs> I'm not talking about Facebook. Amen. I snap Google. I don't know all of that stuff. I don't. I, I, I know something that I don't know what it is. I don't. Hey, but listen to me. When you go put a trash on there, hey man, the trash talking somebody. Hey, don't use those vagaries. That's right. Don't use that thing. You're, 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 you're a coward for one thing if you do that. Amen. Hey, man. Hey, have enough God in you when somebody offends you, trespasses against you to do what Jesus said and go and tell him or her your fault between you 
and him alone. Amen. Is that plain? Yes, sir. I told you I'm not the smartest fellow in the world, but that's plain. I don't need a whole lot of money. I don't need a whole lot of preaching to even understand that. Now I'm telling you, it's little things like that that create a lot. I've seen it happen in this church. Amen. And I, I, I told you, I told you, if I, if I see it and I find out, I will blast it. What do you call blasting that stuff? Right? Have, have a clue who I'm talking about, but a preacher by the name of Ross Lewis, who was a great man of God, was a great evangelist and a preacher and pastor, but traveled all over Western North Carolina. He took off, he really just is a, 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 a pastor. I spent 25, 25, 30 years ago, but I'll never forget about the first, second time he got up in the pulpit. I'm looking, I can't do it for Sunday morning or Sunday night. He got up there and he said, Here's the deal. He said, The first one of y'all that come to me and start telling me what everybody, what somebody else is doing, he said, I'm going to get up here to pull the bullpen. And he said, I'm, We're just going to take care of it. So if you've got problems, just come on. Yeah. <laughs> we'll deal with them right here in the church. I don't know that he ever had to do that. For one reason, I think they knew he was serious. <laughs> He wasn't playing. And the second reason was it, it made people, people think a little more. And I'll tell you, we need to be very because if we want to have joy in this world, if we want to have peace and be able to rejoice, one of the things that we need to do is as brothers and sisters in Christ, when we have conflict, follow the scriptural mandate and take care of it so it doesn't destroy God's work right here because there's churches this morning that are shut down and closed up and nobody goes or it, 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 even worse than that is these folks gather in what used to be a church and the Holy Ghost ain't been there in yeah. 10 years hey that's the worst and, and, and all because two folks hey man Let common sense read the Bible. That's right. Amen. And I will tell you this one thought crossed my mind. I'll never get one of the one of the greatest meetings I was ever in. I'm trying to hurry. One of the greatest meetings I was ever in in my life went to a church called Shade Grove Baptist Church for a revival meeting one night. And this it just seemed like a spirit was out of the good spirit moving, but there's also a like a spirit just kind of like a damp blanket. My goodness, that preacher got up all that night and preached. And at the end, gave, a, gave an invitation. And the invitation seemed to, as I recall, seemed a little bit drawn out. But after three, four, maybe five minutes, this little old lady got up from this backside of the church over here. And came down and got into the altar and began to cry. And began to weep. And for whatever reason, nobody, nobody else Came and bowed with her. They, I guess they figured she just needed to do some business between her and God. But in just a minute or two later, there's another little old lady come out of this side of the sanctuary. And come down here and got beside her and begin to pray and weep with her. The next thing I can tell, one of them had put their arm around the other. They just prayed together, weeping and worshiping. And got up and hugged, and I mean, it was happy. That was a serious, that was a serious hug. They was able to rejoice together. And I come to find out, somebody told me what had happened. I don't know, I don't remember the details of what, but they were sisters. And they got into an argument and got in a fight. And hadn't spoken in years. That's, that's, that'll rob you joy. Not only does that rob you joy, that gives the devil an open door. That gives the devil an open door. Them two sisters, some one of them anyhow, must have got to thinking, got to reading, and got to praying. The only thing I know about it is this. They went out there that night. They could love one another. They could pray. But listen, they could love one another. They could, I mean, in honesty, hug and, and kiss and and love one and pray together and worship together and rejoice together. Had they never done it, that would have robbed them until their dying day. And I'm telling you, the Bible is so clear. Go to your brother alone. And if he shall hear thee, thou hast gained thy brother. The 
The thing about it is, you do your part. The rest is on them. I and mean, that's just that's just Bible. You just but do your part. Like I say again, don't be putting the your drama on Facebook and give it to nobody. Yeah. I don't know why it is. Some folks have to put every ever every little splinter they give it. God. God help. Every splinter they got it's, it's a it's a death sentence, I think, and and, and you're worried about when 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 we're gonna go on life support. I've never in my life, some of you just, I just don't understand, y'all have it, I don't know, quit it. It's not that bad, really. But he said, go to your brother. You want to be able to rejoice in the Lord all the way? And again, I say rejoice. Don't be bickering. Be beloved. Amen. If you, if, I, I don't know why. This is just where the Lord put me. Uh, but I don't know why it is. If, if, if that first one don't work, that's when you go to Facebook. Right? <laughs> but if, if, if it, you know, if it first you don't succeed, try, try again. So if you don't, if, if they won't straighten up and, and grovel with me and, and, and plead with you to forgive them, then we go to Facebook. Right? Because now we know we're sorry no good. Hey, you ought to be what he's saying is handling within the body. And even in Philippians chapter number four, he's talking to the body, which is Christ. Amen. Judas and Sintyke, whatever their issue was, he said, what you need to do is get the same mind. Now I want to move on. Now I'm telling you, making making amends with your brethren, your sister, whatever it is, will restore your rejoicing. We show this book with you and I'll move on. It's getting late. Adrian Rogers. And I, I haven't used this in a while. But some of you have probably heard this. You've probably heard me say it before. But here's what, one of the greatest quotes I've ever heard by, by one of the greatest preachers ever preached. Adrian Rogers said this. He said, Unforgiveness is the poison we drink, hoping it'll kill somebody else. When you're unable to forgive, you're not hurting them near as bad as you are yourself. Because you're robbing yourself of joy. Because you can't breathe. The devil will put them on your mind all the time. Anybody, let me say this. Don't let strife separate you. Thirdly, we're to labor together. In verse number three of Philippians chapter number four, and I try not to linger here long, I, I, I do want to say this. This church has a has a wonderful capacity to come together. We've seen the last little bit, but it's not the first time we've seen it. But our church has a wonderful capacity, and I think most Bible-centered churches do, come together and, and get things done, work it out, do whatever it takes to make it happen. But he said here in verse number three, he said, and I entreat thee also, true yoke fellow. So that's, that's the church. He's talking about the brethren. He's talking about the body. He said, help those women which labored with me in the gospel, with comment also and with other my fellow laborers whose names are in the book of life. If there's one thing that ought to unite us, it is the labor of the gospel. Amen. If there's one thing, if we could, if we have focus on, if we as a church focus on just a couple of things, first and foremost, our love for our redeemer. Our love for the Savior. That will be our first and primary focus in the body, in this body. I mean, if we if our primary focus is not him, what what is it? What's it about? What what are we doing? That will be our it'll be this. In order to be that we are co-laboring, we're yoking up together and we're Days I, as I was uh, able to come out uh, just a few days ago, and I come out. So his family, and they were going through the neighborhood down there in Buffalo's Cove. They were handing out Bibles and, and, and talking to people and encouraging and strength. Hey, 
That's working together to make things happen. And and listen, you want to talk? You want to talk about rejoicing when we lock arms together? When we, we get together, we've got a common mission, and, a, and, and we're in one mind with the Savior, and we're pushing forward and doing our dead level best, take the gospel to a lost and dying world, and we see the result of that, amen, which is others able to rejoice, others see, receiving salvation, others coming to know the Lord Jesus as we do. Hey, I'll tell you right now, that calls some rejoicing in the house of the Lord. Those are, sometimes I think there's a there's a real reason why we've talked about this and some of us others have talked about uh, church. I believe we've got a good church, a good strong church. I believe we do our dead little best to follow the Bible and where we're wrong, we, we, we desire to be corrected. Hey Amen, but, but we talk about this, we talk about how years and years ago Hey, hey man, churches, you'd go in and, and, and people would get to shout and praise at the drop of a hat. Some of them bring their hat in just so they have. How many of you know what a pounding is? Some of you know, some of you, it ain't when you whoop somebody. I remember when I was a church, when I was a child. Churches would do what they call pounding. And, and they'd get together. The church would come, somebody would be in need. Whoever that somebody may have been. And especially within the body. Because we're responsible for each other. All right? Yeah. As, as, my, as my brother, I'm responsible. Hey Amen. For you men, if I can help you in any way. As a sister to me, you ladies are struggling. I will do the best that I can to help you and all I can. When I was a child, they'd get together and they just collect everything, collect food and just whatever the family was in need of. And, and they would, in <coughs> truckloads sometimes you'd see. And they'd take them up and deliver them to the house. Nobody was looking for any praise or any worship. They just wanted to help. They called that a pound. And I guess it's about uh, the number of pounds. They got two to them, I guess. I'm not sure. Hey, but, but things like that don't happen like we used to. That's right. I, I mean, we ought, listen, we ought to be looking out one for another. The Bible says pray to you one for another. Amen? Praying has some time to do with putting legs to you, right? right. I mean, it's, it's, it's easy to pray for somebody. It's a different thing, amen, when you get them off your knees and get your legs back under and say, God, now here's what I heard. I pray, and I've heard people pray this way. Lord, I want you to answer your prayers. I want you to answer our prayers. And if there's something that I can do, show me what to do personally so that I can be an answer to that prayer. That's submission. Because it's easy to pray that somebody get done and let's hope somebody else does it. But it's different when you lay yourself on the altar of sacrifice and say, Lord, I see the need. And I know you're able to. What was it Isaiah said? He said, I believe in the book of Isaiah chapter number 6, he said, uh, who shall go for us? Who shall I send? And Isaiah said, Lord, here am I. Send me. For each other and for those in need around us, we've never, nobody's ever seen like, anything like what we're seeing. Nobody's ever seen nothing like what we're seeing. Now, and I thank you, look, I, don't, I don't mean to say we're not, we are. Don't misunderstand. But don't forget, when this, when this calms down, when this settles out a little bit, the church still needs to be in the same place, right. sitting on the same hill, yeah. shining the same light, yeah. so that when it's over and darkness begins to come back in, yeah. there's your example. There's your Savior. There's his body. There's the ones who are willing and able and, and ready, amen, to do the work of the gospel. Hey, when we come together and we do things like that, I promise you it'll cause rejoicing in your life. Amen. Amen. It'll cause rejoicing in your life. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. In closing, it, it, it should be a so, excuse me, 
a soul nourishing and thrilling thing in our lives to work together for the advance, advancement of the church and the furtherance of the gospel. It ought to thrill us now. Now things have got kind of messed up. We're doing street preaching and uh, uh, first Sunday night of the month going out in the community. Hey man, I'll never forget this. I'll never forget this. First church I pastored, and I was doing church folks meeting. But we were trying to put together a visitation program. And uh, I was trying to get, I was trying to get a, a set time when we could all, when the most could meet together and go out in the community where we were. I thought it was south end of Newport County, thought so we could go out and do something uh, in the community for the church. And as we was talking back and forth about times and days and things, I had one fellow, and this is an older man, probably in his 60s by then. <clears throat> and he stood up, because he was one of them fellows that had not just to be heard, but to be seen. And he stood up and he said, he said this. He said, I, I just, I've never heard the Lord talk to me about this. Talk to me about doing what we're talking about doing. I'm going to be honest with you, I was green. I've been, I've been pastoring about two, two years, maybe. maybe. I was floored. I honestly didn't have a response. I was just shocked that somebody who was a professed Christian would say, the Lord never spoke to me about visiting folks, about going out. I don't know what to say now. The Lord probably ain't never spoke to you about anything. Hey man, if he ain't spoke to you about that, which is a great commission, what? Well, in the church. And if you don't if you don't see that as important, if you don't see that as a work that is worthy of doing and doing with everything in you, one or two problems you have, my friend. You're either lost as a dog on high wings, or you're back sweating, about to fall off the cliff. Evangelism, I'll tell you, within this body and within the church collectively, is I entreat the also young fellow, help those women with slavery with me in the gospel, which with commit also with other my fellow laborers whose names are in the book of life. If your name is in the book of life. You will be desiring to labor for the purpose of the gospel and the faith of the church. And if you're not, rejoicing when the church does that, when the church does that together, it causes rejoicing. It'll cause But if it took 10 years of evangelism and one soul got saved, it would be worth 10 years of evangelism. How do you estimate the value of the soul? That's musicians, if you will, to come back to the music for just a minute. It could possibly be. That, that I've hit on something, or I say this, God's hit on something somewhere where you body this morning. There's some disagreement. I, 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 we haven't got there yet, but I, I, there was a time in this church been before any of I almost think if you were here, Poppy would remember, my wife and myself would remember, but we had a time when it just seemed like it was just several different things that were going on that were conflict in the church. Man, it got so heavy as a pastor, I, I, I couldn't hardly preach. Because I knew that I've got 14 different things going on in the dirt, and I can't fix one of them. And I'll never forget, I got a bucket. I got a bucket, went outside for the church. 
I gathered up a bunch of old rocks. And in the church, I had everybody in the church a rock. A rock. I had everybody in the church a rock. And I said, that bunch of them up here, and I preached. I preached on that scripture over there where Jesus said, He does not you without sin, let him cast the first stone. God preached, I say, I preached, God worked that night. God preached, God worked. And that altar was full that night of weeping. And, and, and as I was praying, I could hear those rocks going in that bucket one by one. Those rocks dropping in that bucket. His burden to me as we give his soul to family. As, as, as rejoicing returns. If you're here this morning, you, your rejoicing has been, has been stumbled by something going on in your life, maybe you with somebody else. If you can't do nothing right now, could you come and do this? Could you come and pray that God will show you exactly how to say what to say when to say to you take your work it out? And listen, it doesn't matter, even if it's not within this body, but somebody in your life that 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 you're struggling with, or things are going on, and you just you just want God's help. Because it happens outside the body too. And that'll hinder your rejoicing. Maybe it is that you've not seen the work of the church or even the church as important as the Lord said it was. The Lord thought the church was so important that he said, I'll build it and to have found it and establish it, I'll give my life for it. Jesus gave his life to found this body of believers. And some of us take it lightly. I tell you, if you want to rejoice, if you want to be able to rejoice in the midst of the darkness of the, the day, if you'll begin to see the value of the church to the God of heaven, and see that as a primary importance in your life, God help you. Let's stand on our feet. I gave you one of your head on the altar of the Lord.